Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Viral with the expansion The Hive. This is by Arcane Wonders and Mebo. It's a two to five player game that takes 60 to 90 minutes and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Viral, you are playing as a virus that is infecting a patient's body. Now, of course, there are other viruses as well, and you're all competing for dominance, trying to infect as much as possible and gain viral points. The body's immune system is going to try and fight you off with certain crises happening in certain vital organs, you're going to take a uh, round of going through six different phases, and you'll do this a number of times based on the number of players in the game. At the end of the game, whoever has scored the most points is the winner. Will you infect the patient the best? Let's go ahead and find out in the game Viral. For the game setup, we're going to include the expansion The Hive. So when I explain the setup, I'll be explaining how you'll set up The Hive as well. If you were playing a normal two-player game with just Viral, there would be actually a dummy player. But in this case, this actually provides us with no dummy player with the new expansion. To begin, take the main game board and place it down within reach of all players. Then, each player is going to select a virus type. That virus type is going to be one of five different colors. I've chosen green and yellow. Each player is going to get a number of cards, mutations, and otherwise that are going to have their symbol on the bottom uh, left-hand corner of the card in addition to each type of vital organ that is present in the human body. With their cards comes their player board and also tokens, virus tokens. And with the expansion will come the additional bonus viral cards that you'll attach to make a large living organism. These are abilities you can use. After each player has gotten their tokens, their cards, their main game board, and their little collage or panorama, you're going to decide who plays first and give them the first player marker. Then setting up the game board. You're going to start set it up from the top to bottom. Uh, first, select the location in the top left-hand corner and place the red marker there. This indicates the rounds in the game. Each player is going to get three discs. Place one in the top right-hand corner in the zero area. This is your victory points. Place one down here in the infection area, starting at zero on your player marker. And then the very bottom left-hand side is going to be your tiebreaker. The first player will go up to the top, and everybody in clockwise order will go down from there. After your discs are done, go ahead and place your crisis markers. There's one, two, three, and four. Just place them in the areas that have the skull. Each player is then going to place, uh, or I should say, yeah, then you're going to place each of the tokens down. They're going to start off white side up, and you can select six of them and return the rest to the box. Once you've selected those six tokens, place them in one of each of the six different areas where they're represented. Then, you're going to go ahead and place your tokens. One at a time, in clockwise order, players are going to place a virus in one of the vital organs. You may never have more than one virus in a vital organ, and each player can only place one of their own. So, if, for instance, the green player could place in the brain, the yellow would then place in the heart, heart one, and then the green could place in heart two, and you'll go back and forth until all spaces are filled with one virus. Then in clockwise order, each player is going to put their hive adjacent to any one of the vital organs, but you must not place it in the same vital organ as another player in clockwise order. After you're done, go ahead and check the events. You should have a good chunk of event cards. You'll randomly shuffle them, and then you'll choose five at random and place them face up in a deck on the third space on the game board. From there, you're then going to have the mutations deck or the action deck. You'll shuffle that deck up, and then you'll draw out three cards and place them down and face up within reach of all players. After that, you're ready to begin the game, the viral and the hive all together. Let's explain how to play. So in a two-player game with the Hive expansion, there's going to be five rounds of play, which means you go through all six phases five times, and then it ends. At the very beginning, number one, and it's nice because it details each of the different phases for you to understand, uh, the first player is going to select a zone card and a mutation card, basically an action card and a location, and you're going to put them together, pair them together. Uh, you have stuff like the brain, the heart, the lung, the liver, the stomach, slash small intestines, large intestines, and then the kidney area. You'll take one of those cards along with one of the action cards and place it face down, and everybody else will do so as well. Well, this should be placed in the zone marked 1. Once you have done that, then the first player will reveal. They'll reveal where, what zone they're going to go into with their virus and what they're going to do with their virus. Uh, the card is going to not just, the, the zone card just represents where you're going. And the action card or mutation card is going to represent what you can do on that location or on any location. 
A card with a highlighted blue square means you must do that action on the location of the zone you've chosen, whereas if it does not have a highlighted blue area, you can do it anywhere on the game board. And for reference, to see what you can do and what your cards do, you can look at your main player board and it will distinguish all the different things that you can do. One is Infect, where you can place an additional virus in that zone or any zone. The next is a Crisis, where you'll place one of the Crisis tokens in that specific zone. Uh, the next is an attack, which means you can remove somebody's token. A magnet, dragging a virus from one location to another. Absorbing, making your virus absorb other players' viruses. Shielding, flipping over your character, which will then allow you to protect it. So whenever it gets removed, instead of being removed, no matter what the removal is, you're going to just simply flip it back to its face-up face. And then finally, move, moving from one zone to another, following the lines, whether they be red or blue, and the arrows therein. Each of these players are going to, in turn order, take their actions with their zone, and then you'll move on to the next portion of phase one, which is taking another mutation card with actions, placing it down along with another one of these zones. Players will then flip these guys over once again, checking the zone, checking the actions. So for instance, I have the brain here, and then I have two of these infect which means it is in the blue highlighted area, so I must infect the brain with two. So I would just simply take two of my guys and place them down into the brain, and that would be all I would do. And everybody else would do the same. Then each of the cards, each pair of cards that everybody has gone through, so provided that everybody has done them, will go to the top portion. The top portion of your player board has a a uh, time counter or an hourglass. We will place them up there, so that means that next round you cannot use them. Then you're going to move on to the next phase. You'll take your red marker and you'll move down, and then you're going to check to see if you have any occupied areas, controlled areas. So it's different depending on the number of players in the game. Uh, I believe it's one for each area in a three or more, and in a two-player game you have to have two in each area. An area is represented by a location that has been marked, like for instance the heart has heart one and heart two. To control that area, you have to have two of your viruses in each of the different zones of the heart. And if you do, you will score whatever the marker says. The marker is either going to be on the white side or the dark blue side. You're going to score a point and you're going to move up on this track here or down on the track, whatever it says. So for instance, if my green guy had two of their viruses on the heart one and two on heart two, I would score with this specific marker one point on my track here. And then I would also take one point up on this uh, the science track here. After doing so, you would then move on. You check every single zone and score anybody that has control, and then you'd move to the next location. The next location is just an action. Whatever the action says is what you do. It's face up so you can see it and you know what's going to happen before it happens, so you can plan ahead. Do the action, discard the card, and move on to the next phase. The next phase is about crises. Crises are these little tokens here on the main game board. Any location that has a number of viruses on it, and in a two-player game or a three-player game, it's three. So in this case, I would have placed this crisis on this location in the heart here. I am going to have to fulfill the crisis. Usually the crisis is basically the body's uh, idea or like its plan to remove the viruses from the location. You will score if you have the most uh, viruses in a location with the crisis, two points and everybody else will get one point. So in this case, green has two and yellow has one. So green will move up two spaces and yellow move up one space. The crisis will resolve, all tokens will be removed. If any token was on its backside with a shield, it would simply flip instead. Resolve all the rest of the crisis or crises if there are any more and then move on to the next round. The next round is basically the inoculation phase or whatever you want to call it, where if you are on the top rung of this ladder here by scoring too many points and basically scientists learning how to cure you, you will go all the way down and lose and remove, I should say, all of your pieces from the game board. Remember though, if you have a shield, simply flip them up. Then move on to the last phase. The last phase checks to see for the tiebreakers. It's gonna determine whoever has the most points is gonna go down on the track and whoever has the least will go up. And then you will move back to the first round of play. Uh, from there, you'll continue play just like that, being able to put cards down, playing them, returning cards from the top back to your hand for the next round and putting those cards back up, going down here, allowing you to score points for area control and possibly moving up on this track here. The action event down below the crises, check to see if you've been 
cured and then check to see who has the um, tiebreaker. After five rounds of this, whoever has the most points is the winner. Now there's a couple unique things as well. In the expansion, The Hive, basically every single time you take your turn, which involves you playing down a zone and a mutation card, you can additionally place one of your viruses on your hive. And also once a turn, um, in once a round I should say, you're able to spend those tokens um, to flip over these cards here. There are four of them, they have a cost to them, and they provide some unique type of benefit or ability. Or otherwise, you can actually use these by moving them out into the location that is adjacent. They're basically connected to the location that you chose. Uh, not only that, but there's also some unique ways of gaining new mutations. As you score victory points in the 4, 8, 12, and 16 slot, as you pass them or enter that space, you can choose any one of the three available mutations to add to your hand or draw from the top of the deck. If you draw from the top of the deck, however, you'll have to shuffle or put the three that you already have in the field down on the bottom and return three more face up. And they are all worth victory points as well. Some of them can be worth zero, one, two, or even three points. The less victory points, the better the card, the more, the crappier the card. Finally, if you get down to 21 points, what's going to happen is it will trigger the game to increase the scoring ability or capability of each of the cards here, or at least change them in some unique way in the zones. Flipping these guys over may increase victory points, reduce the cost of this track, or increase the cost of this track, and you're going to continue the game from there. Otherwise, that's basically about it. Don't forget to use any passive abilities you've gained from the Hive expansion by removing them from your Hive. Don't forget to place, as you're placing down your mutation card and your zone card, a virus in your Hive. And remember that you can only spend these tokens in the Hive to flip these guys over to give you a benefit. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner, and the way you calculate points is by checking to see what cards in your deck are worth victory points, as well as scoring one additional victory point for each zone that you have a character in, as well as, of course, whatever your final victory point scoring is. Otherwise, that's basically how you play the game. Hive and uh, Viral, let's go ahead and talk about it now. Viral at its core is an area control game where you're trying to control different areas of the human body and each area is represented by either one, two, or even three zones. To control these areas, you're gonna need a certain number of units in each of the areas. And in a two player game, it's a little more challenging because you require two units in each of the zones where in any other player game, it's just one. Crises is also a way to score victory points, and quite a few of them, and in order to do so, it changes based on the number of players, which is detailed on the board here. In a two or three player game, it's three viruses in a single zone, and then in a four or five, it's four or five in a single zone. More players equals more viruses needed in a single area to cause a crisis. Crisis will score you points, but you'll also lose units. Now, your units are going to go back to you and come back onto the board here. They're pretty fast moving. They're always going to be dropping down onto the hive. Losing units is not a huge deal in this game. It's not going to set you back too badly, and it's all about controlling how much you want to sacrifice in order to gain victory points uh, to eventually score. Of course, noting too that cards or, or these tokens or tiles are going to change uh, based on the end game scenario. So for instance, like this little guy here, this, when you control this zone originally, you're going to get one point, but you'll have to go up one point on this track here, and you never want to go up on this track. It can be dangerous. But at the end game, it's just one point and zero points on the track here. So it makes it a little, not more victory points, but safer in regards to controlling the area. You're always going to be able to place guys on the board for the most part, utilizing the actions that you have, and you will gain new cards. Now, it's not really a deck builder or hand management game. It's lightly because you do get to select around four of them. You're definitely going to get to 16 points by the end of the game. Thusly, you're likely going to be getting all four of the different cards. They give you victory points as well as new and unique actions. Cards with lower are definitely going to be better. Cards with higher points are going to be not as good. But at the end of the game, it really makes a difference. This is a very tight game. It's very likely that one player is going to only be two or three points ahead of the other players because they made those right little calculations at the end of the game, the beginning of the game, and made all the difference. Uh, the action cards. They're light, they're a way to express when the game is going to end, and they provide a benefit to players who are paying attention. I really enjoy this game. It's fluid and straightforward. You're playing an action, another action, getting any cards you played the previous round and putting the ones that you played back up there, moving down to check for area control. Then you're going to suffer any consequences for certain areas moving up on this track where eventually if you get too high, you'll lose all your units. 
taking an action or the main event that everyone will get to take uh, an event or take take you know some type of action with then checking for crisis and possibly using losing loot units or making your opponents lose them for victory points checking to see if you lose everything and then of course the tiebreaker and moving back again I also really enjoy the movement of this game. It kind of symbolizes how you move throughout the human body. The heart too can move pretty much anywhere in the entire battlefield. Uh, however, let's say it is a battlefield really. However, the brain only has one way in and that's through the heart too. However, heart one is where everything is uh, leaving and going to. So if I wanted from the stomach, I can move all the way to heart one. And you follow the arrows on the board to tell you where you can go. Depending on the game and depending on the specific victory point conditions will determine where you want to control and when. These can give you lots of points but make you suffer on this track here. It can cause you to have to basically remove your units and if you've shielded them you can protect them. There's ways in where you can make your opponents score but they'll lose vital units. And there's also ways in which you can destroy your opponents units in places they would like to score. This is a tight knit, simple, straightforward game with a lot of choice and a lot of variety. It's got a mix of area control and a mix of hand management, and it's something that pretty much anybody can enjoy. If you don't mind the theme of being a virus and infecting a human body and making them a potentially not feel so great, then as long as that's okay with you, then you're going to enjoy this game. It is a family friendly game for the most part. Nothing's like too, it's nothing like too obvious to somebody who'd be like, oh, they're killing the player. It's not really like that. It's more so like a cold moving through the body. And if you're able to be the best cold possible, then you win. The Hive expansion presents some new benefits for the second, the two player game. Now two player games are going to allow players to not play with a dummy player, which is excellent. They also provide these unique cards that you can now spend with your Hive, which is also new, in order to gain a benefit for the entire game. Like for, for instance, my character says that I can always win ties when I pay for this ability. Or for the outbreak, zones that I control award minus one research, which is this track here. It's super, super good and lasts for the entire game as long as you flip it over paying for it from the hive. But maybe you don't want these. Maybe you want additional viruses uh, from the hive and you want to place them inside the body and move them around to score your additional victory points out here and not use those. And you can kind of choose and mix and match how you want to do certain things in the game. The color, that's the, very, very, very vibrant and beautiful. It's, it's kind of like kitty and fun. The viruses are kind of creepy and icky uh, and it feels like you're moving around and kind of infecting things and other players are infecting things as well. And it does a really good job of that and having these little weird amoeboids kind of moving around and cards you're utilizing that they dictate what type of actions you'll take in the game. Your player board dictates all the actions. Everything on the board is pretty much expressed minus the area control aspect where if you're playing a two player game you have to have two in each area and any other player it's just one. I wish that was stated somewhere but it's not a huge deal. And of course the quality of the game pieces. All the board, the tokens, everything's nice and thick, the wooden pieces are wonderful, and the cards are, are really well explained, the graphic design is great. It's just a really fun game. It's nothing super crazy, but it's a game I would easily want to play again. It's actually another game I'm going to be keeping in my collection with Arcane Wonders. They've been nailing these games so far, and I really, really enjoyed this one. In fact, if you only have two players, The Hive is a must pick up as opposed to most expansions, which are just kind of more of the same. This presents unique little twists and turns, gives you a couple extra action cards, but what it really does is allows you to play two players without having to worry about a machina automata, automata type thing, which is great. Overall, Viral and The Hive are both pickups. Buy them together if you don't have the game, and if you just have Viral, pick up The Hive, because this game is excellent. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Viral and the expansion The Hive. If you're interested in picking up this game, there's a link down below in the description. If you'd like as well, and you think you've earned it, and you've watched more than one of our videos here, you can go ahead and subscribe, and hit that subscribe button, the bell notification button as well, as more videos we pump out, a lot of published games, indie games, games you might not have heard before, and that would be a good way for you to kind of check out these games and see if they're right for you. We have a website on filteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, kickstarter lists, and more, and don't forget we have a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, uh, where we do it on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. You can choose any of the three, it's a multi-stream. On Wednesdays we do a stream on Whatnot, where we sell games, talk about games, play games, and all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to infecting the human body with you next time. That is creepy.